The pandemic was certainly a hard time for people around the world, but one silver lining, if we can call it that, was the historically low mortgage rates, which allowed many more people the opportunity to buy a home. Fortunately, the worst of the pandemic has passed, but unfortunately, so have those ultra low mortgage rates. This leaves many homeowners in a dilemma. What do you do when you love your low mortgage rate, but you're not particularly happy with your house? Do you sell now trading your 3% or lower rate for a 7% or higher rate and get the house that you love, but at a higher payment? Or do you just sit on the sidelines and wait until rates come down a bit? In this discussion, we'll provide three essential questions to ask yourself that will help you to determine the best answer for your situation. We'll do it right after this. Hey there folks, welcome back to Living in Northern Colorado. My name is Roger Kelly and I'm an employing level broker with the Kelly team of Newhouse Real Estate based in beautiful Fort Collins. Before we dive in, could you do us a favor, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. It doesn't cost you anything and it makes the YouTube algorithms happy, which helps us to produce more content that can help guide you in your future real estate decisions. Today we're delving into a unique dilemma many homeowners face, loving their mortgage more than their house. I'm sure you recall that historically low mortgage rates in 2020 to 2022 created what we can only call a home buying frenzy unlike anything we'd ever seen before. There simply were not enough houses on the market to meet the demand and the historically low interest rates caused such competition among buyers that the homes that were on the market often saw unprecedented bidding wars that really spiked prices. Just to give you an example of how crazy it got here in Northern Colorado, I personally remember one of my buyers offering nearly $100,000 over asking on one property and they were outbid. It was a tough time. People were so eager to avoid this competition that they were buying homes sight unseen just to get into something. Still, the low rate party was good for most people while it lasted. Today, according to MarketWatch, 23% of all mortgages have a rate of less than 3%, if you can imagine that and 38% of homeowners have a mortgage rate between 3 and 4%, which means that a total of 61% of all mortgages in the U.S. are now sitting at a 4% interest rate or less. Unfortunately, now that rates are higher, some buyers who need a different house are feeling a bit trapped by the low rate they have versus the higher rate they will have to pay if they sell now and buy something else. Now, if you're in that situation, what should you do? Should you sell now and buy a house that you love? or should you stay where you're at and wait for rates to come down? Well, the short answer to that is it really depends. It depends on the circumstances that you find yourself in. Here's the three questions that you should be asking yourself. The first question, am I facing a life situation that I have no control over that is demanding that I sell now? You know, things like job transfers, divorces, uh, family health ch changes, things like that, that all can radically impact where you're going to live in those cases, the circumstances typically dictate what you do. But if that's not your case, then ask yourself these two additional questions. The second question is, do I have a significant amount of high interest debt, such as credit cards, car loans, and such? And the third question is, is my desire for a different house a pressing need or more of a pressing want? If you don't have significant high interest debt that you're paying each month, and there's no compelling reason forcing you to move, then you might want to wait until rates come down a bit before you sell. Now the golden question, how long will that take? Well, obviously nobody knows the answer for sure, but many economists feel that rates will come down within the next 12 to 24 months. You know, the truth is that rates should already be about 1% lower than they are now. Historically, mortgage rates follow inflation and they average around one and three quarters to 2% higher than the 10-year treasury rate, which at the moment is running in the mid fours. By that measure, we would expect mortgage rates today to be somewhere in the mid to low sixes. But for the first time in history, mortgage rates are running over 3% higher than the 10-year treasury rate, and that's due to factors that are really outside the scope of this discussion. But if you'd like to know the answer, then leave a comment below, and if there's enough interest, I'll make a video on that. Well, that said, and based upon decades of historical precedent, it is reasonable to expect that rates will be coming down in the not-too-distant future, 
although I think it's safe to say it is unlikely we will ever see rates again as low as they were during the pandemic. Many groups who are in the business of watching these things are suggesting that we could be at least in the fives or sixes in 2024, and if the Fed hits their inflation target of 2% in the next 12 to 24 months, we might even be back in the high fours again. But what if you're struggling with high interest debt now? Well, know that you're not alone. According to data released this year by the Federal Reserve, credit card balances rose to a high of just over a trillion dollars for the first time. In Colorado, the credit card debt averages out to be over $8,000 per person. So in order to determine whether it might make sense to sell now in the face of higher rates, you might want to use a debt consolidation calculator or even a blended rate calculator to figure out the total interest rate that you're paying on all your debt. And you can find these all over the internet. I'll leave a couple of links in the description. But do you have enough equity in your home to accomplish this, to pay off your high interest debts and still put 20% down on your uh, new mortgage? Well, it's very possible and quite likely. According to MarketWatch, as of June 2023, homeowners in the United States had $10.5 trillion in equity in their homes. That's the fourth highest single month on record. And according to CoreLogic, that breaks down to an average of $249,000 in equity per home. Of course, if you like your home, but you have a large amount of high interest debt, paying it off with a home equity line of credit, or a HELOC as they are called, uh, could potentially reduce your overall monthly payments from where they're at now. But if you don't like your home and you have a lot of high interest debt, then selling it and using some of the proceeds to pay off your debts while still putting 20% down on your next home could be just the answer. Now, you might find that you're not paying any more in, in the new house than you're paying today, and in some cases, you might even be paying lower in your overall payments. Don't forget that mortgage interest is often tax deductible as well, so there could be additional benefits to uh, this strategy. Your tax or financial advisor can tell you if that's an option for you. It is for most people, so you might want to look into that. So, if you've done the math and selling now seems like a good strategy to you, let me just say we would love to help you with that. But there are a couple of things to keep in mind about the market right now. Now, you've probably heard that there are lots of people who want homes out there and that inventory is tight, and that is all true. But right now, because of higher interest rates, many qualified buyers who could buy now are choosing to sit on the sidelines waiting for rates to drop. So homes, generally speaking, are not selling as quickly as they were two or three years ago. That means that sellers need to be realistic about their expectations for time on the market, pricing, and terms. Having an experienced real estate broker who knows the market, the strategies, and is adept at marketing your home, as well as negotiating for the best terms is especially important to getting the best deal for you. For example, one strategy your real estate professional might suggest is to consider offering a 2-1 interest rate buy-down to the buyer as a concession for a full price offer. Well, how does that work? Well, after establishing the fair market price for your home, you, the seller, would offer a concession of around 2 to 2.5% 2 of the sales price back to the buyer to buy down the buyer's loan rate, 2% the first year and 1% the second year. Now, if a buyer is sitting on the sidelines of the market because the higher mortgage rates are keeping them there, a 2-1 interest rate buy-down could be just the nudge that they need to buy now with the goal of refinancing in the next 12 to 24 months when rates are likely to be lower. They would also benefit from the expected minimum appreciation rate of 4 to 6 percent that is expected here in northern Colorado over the next 12 months. You know, if you figure it out, that's twenty to $30,000 of increased value on a $500,000 uh, home if the buyer buys today. So these kinds of strategies can make your home much more attractive to hesitant buyers and get you a quicker sale for a better price in an otherwise slow market. So there you have it, the age-old question of when to sell your home, but with a unique twist. Ultimately, the decision hinges on your personal circumstances and how you answer the three questions. So in summary, if you're reasonably comfortable with your current home and you have no pressing financial issues or compelling reasons to move, congratulations by the way, then waiting 12 to 24 months for lower interest rates before selling might be the way to go. However, if you're drowning in high interest debt and you don't particularly like your home, 
then selling now, even with higher mortgage rates, can provide a smart solution to resolve both problems, ultimately resulting in you're paying the same amount that you're paying now, or ideally, uh, you might even be paying less in total monthly expenses than you are now, with potentially adding the tax advantages. As always, if you'd like more information, perhaps you'd like a free home valuation to figure out how much equity you might have in your home, or if you have any real estate questions or comments, or you'd just like to bounce some ideas around with an experienced real estate broker, feel free to give us a call, text, or email. Our contact information is in the description. And if you found this information helpful, please take a moment to support our channel and give us a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. We'd really appreciate it. Till we meet again, make it a great day, and we'll see you in the next video.